I bought this Range Rover for $3,600 when it's worth close to $9,000. And this is not my first time buying cars at such a steep discount. I bought regular cars this way, I bought cool cars this way, and even an exotic one too. And in this video, I will teach you step-by-step step how you can also buy a car that you want, even if you're not a car person. Where you buy the car, drive it for some time, and then when you sell it, you make money on it. And at the end of this video, I will share the magic text that I send out to car sellers that gets me 40 to 80% off their asking price. Let's go. But before you start your car hacking journey, you wanna make sure that you have your buying criteria that you follow every time you buy the car to make sure, for one, that you're not overpaying for the car. And for two, when you bought this car, you're done with it. You wanna make sure by the time you're selling it, it's still attractive to sell. Let me share with you my buying criteria that consists of four things. For one, I don't buy cars that have more than 120,000 miles on it. Number two, I only buy cars with clean title, with no accident history. Simply because by the time you're done with it and selling it now, now, it's going to be easier to market as the car that never been an accident. Number three, the overall cosmetic condition of the car on the exterior and the interior has to be acceptable. No torn seats, no broken dashboards, no massive amount of dings and scuffs and holes on the bumper or whatever. And number four, which is even more important, is the overall mechanical condition of the car. I do not want to invest a lot of money into the car that I just bought. By simply following these four things in my buying criteria in the last 70 years, I was able to buy over 120 cars that I was able to enjoy, drive around, and when I sold them, I made money on them. Make sure that you also come up with your buying criteria and stick to it, or simply just take mine because it works. Now let's get into six steps that are gonna teach you how to properly car hack. Step number one is learn the basics of the car. So where do you start? You start with something you're familiar with. You're watching me right now, you at least probably own or used to own some kind of car. So start there. You don't have to go too crazy or too far. Start with what you know. And if you're 16, 17, or 18 year old teenager watching this video then start with something that you want to own but nothing fancy or crazy we gotta start somewhere it has to be simple my personal suggestion would be something very well established and reliable cars like toyota toyota rav4 corolla camry honda cars like accord civic crvs and any subaru model is going to be a really good one to start with simply because they're most reliable and hold the value the best and once you learn how to play this fun game of car hacking then you can make Make your way up to cars like this one believe me i also didn't start with cars like this my very first car that i bought when i moved to the u.s back in 2016 was 2007 toyota camry hybrid i drove that car for about eight months and when i sold it i made about 1200 dollars on it and the idea of car hacking was born in my head and since then like i mentioned earlier i own a lot of cars and made money on most of them so start with what you know the second step is to learn how to properly come by going to a Facebook marketplace or Craigslist. After identifying your card, you should be able to come up with the right price that you're going to sell when you're done with your car. When comparing prices and coming up with the right comp for your car, you have to remember a very important rule. You make the money when you buy the car, not sell it. Now, let me teach you how to properly comp the car that you're buying. All right, let me pull up my computer, my pocket Wi-Fi. Okay, we simply Google Craigslist Phoenix, because I'm in Phoenix right now. There we go, cars and trucks. And then on a make and model, we put Range Rover, because that's what I currently am car hacking. And then go to owner. And then title status, you want to make sure it's clean title. And then model year, you want to go one year older and one year younger so this is 2009 so we go between 2008 2009 and then apply so this is going to eliminate all the dealer options which we don't need as we are not dealers here there you go so we have 2010 at 82,000. this thing has 115,000. so um, we're going to look for something similar so there's 2010 selling for 11,000 with 140, so significantly more miles. This is less miles, but it's costing you, to cost you to buy almost 20 grand. That's at least what they're asking, right? And then 9,500 for this one, 139,000, 2009. There you go, this is a, as close um, comp as possible. 
it's a good comp right here it is the different engine so but we are safe here then this one at 7139 uh, one year younger and then there's this one 2010 wood head gaskets are blown so it's going to be very expensive repair so now it's not a good comp there's this one 2009 almost 200,000 miles asking 49s i bought this again for 3600 bucks and then there's this one in tucson for almost 12k i guess this is a dealer or no could be a dealer it is iconic nice uh, and then we look in the area, like, let's go Flagstaff, a couple hours away. We're seeing similar cars here. Let's go to Vegas. Um, 2,840,000, 7,000. 170, 50, 200. 96,000 miles, 2,080, one year older. And it is selling for 11 and a half. So at $3,600 with this one, I am very safe. I'm sitting very safe. It's pretty cool. 162,000 miles, asking 8,000. So this is exactly how you comp the car that you buying. You go one year younger, one year older, owner only, no dealers, and just look in the area. And that's how you find out how much you're gonna sell your car for in three, four, five, six months. Very simple. So now you know what kind of car you want and how to properly comp the car you want. And that leads us to step number three, which is the examination. So once you schedule an appointment to see the car that you identified as a good deal, you go and test the car, you check the car in person and meet with the seller. So let me demonstrate how it's done on this specific car that I just bought a few days ago. So you're at the spot, you met the owner, and now the car is in front of you. You simply go by walking around and identifying the issues that you might have. So walking around, you just examine the thing all over, make sure there's nothing major is happening here. Specifically on this one, the only thing that I personally found was the scuff here on the rear panel, which is not a big deal because I got such a good deal on it. But the paint is amazing. It's a little dusty right now. Bumpers you normally have all of the cosmetic issues. So bumpers are fine here. Tires are good. Doors, the roof, everything looks pretty good. Like I said, tires are good. Overall, the cosmetic condition of the car, especially on the inside, says a lot about the car ownership history. So the seats are here pretty solid. The dashboard is good. The glass is solid, no cracks anywhere. So that's how simply you just examine the car from visual standpoint. The next thing you do is pop the hood. But you literally do the same thing here. The same way you examine the exterior, you go in the engine bay and make sure there is no funky leaks going on here. And then you go underneath, do the same thing. This thing is pretty dry and then make sure the radiator fluid is there, brake fluid is there. By the way, never open the radiator cap, which we have no access in European cars like this. It's pretty hard to get access to them. You wanna make sure you don't open it, you don't unscrew the lid when it's really hot. You probably know that. If you didn't, well, now you know. It's actually dangerous. So then the second thing you do, the important thing is you go and start the car. All right. Starts right up. There is no weird lights, no check engine light. It says hood open, which is fine. But this is how you check the car. And then you go back to the engine bay and listen to the sound. This is how the healthy V8 engine, BMW engine, this is, I know it's a Land Rover, but this is a 4.4 V8 from BMW because BMW owned the Range Rover brand and Jaguar brand 
I mean Land Rover brand at the time and they have their shitty 4.4 V8 engine in them but this one has been kept very well has been serviced pretty well and also you want to make sure that the oil change on it is fresh this thing has 115,000 but the next oil change is at 119 and that's why the condition of the oil is pretty fresh on it and now the next thing you do is you take it for a spin for a test drive normally you should take it on the highway as well i'm not going to do it for this video because i obviously already bought it and i already done it but here's some important things that you should do when you take it on the test drive all right so you start slow and just listen to the suspension of the car if there's some bumpy conditions that you can find on the road that would be great to check the suspension this thing has air suspension so it's going to be smooth going over everything you see on the road but then you go these circular motion moves on the on whatever road or pavement you're driving and you turn to the edge on the left to the edge on the right to make sure that it's not doing anything weird and then you shift the transmission here and make sure there's nothing bumpy happening when you shift in the transmission this is really smooth this is unbelievable that it's in this condition normally all these european cars are in terrible condition but this one is amazing you see it's working hopefully it's not too loud but then yeah you go reverse make sure the reverse is going well there's no funky noise weird noise and then you go back and shift to the drive and just hit the gas and then press the brakes and they work and that's how you do the test drive oh don't forget the highway drive. It's very important to take it to at least 60, 65 miles per hour. Now, after test driving it, taking it for a spin, you know this car is in decent shape. It drives well. Now it is time for negotiation. To remember how much you're going to sell the car for. Don't forget about that. Keep that in mind. The next thing is you have to keep pointing at the issues that whatever car you're looking at has. Like all of the scuffs, maybe a little brake job that needs to be done or tires that need to be replaced like some basic stuff i don't mind doing that work a little bit because it gives me a lot of leverage to negotiate price as much down as possible so point at those issues that can help you to negotiate the price as much down as you want next important thing when it comes to negotiation of the car or any negotiation for that matter never name the price first never be that person to name the price first simply because whatever number you have in mind could be a lot higher than what the seller actually wanted in the first place instead when you have the final step of negotiation ask this question and this question works every time when i ask the seller if you were in my shoes how much would you be comfortable to pay for this car and just wait for the answer and literally eight out of ten they will give you the price that you want or very close price that you wanted to buy the car for and that's how i've been buying these cars at such a steep discount enjoying them and making money along the way now you got the price that you wanted you have the car that you want now let's go to step number five which is the paperwork side of things and paperwork for used cars older cars is very simple all you need is literally just the title and maybe bill of sale which could be a, just a regular piece of paper that you can write simple stuff like this car this model this vin number was sold by this guy which is the seller and bought by this guy for this much on this date and that's it that's simple bill of sale make sure the title for this car or whatever car you're buying is available and you match the vin number with the VIN on the title with the VIN number on the car there's a lot of scammers out there and just make sure getting the title right paperwork for the car and the title of the car is number one reason why I love doing car hacking with older cars because if you're buying a three five-year-old car most likely that car is still gonna have payments and obviously it's gonna be a lot more expensive too and the owner the seller not gonna have the title and you want to have the title in hand so fill out the title and the bill of sale and you are good to go so when it comes to paperwork if depending whether you're gonna actually register under your name 
but if you're keeping it for a month and longer i highly advise you you have to legally register the car but occasionally i've been doing stuff maybe you're not supposed to do what i've been doing basically buying a car and wholesaling what i would do is go to dmv with the new buyer and just tell the dmv hey i bought this car but unfortunately i don't really like this car i changed my mind i decided to resell the car to this guy this is how much i paid for it they might make you to pay the taxes use sales tax but uh, to be honest they really never made me to pay in over 100 cars that i bought and sold i did that once once i had to pay the use sales tax because i never registered under my name and i had to sell the car within two weeks and then the other guy who bought the car also had to pay the sales tax so in this scenario only the state whatever state you're in making the money so but i've been double transferring so basically on the bill of sale that i originally purchased from the owner i put my name and then i create a new bill of sale with the name of the new buyer and put myself as a seller and then that buyer now has the new bill of sale the same title and goes to dmv and registers the car at what prices i buy these cars i'm still gonna be able to make money when i'm paying for sales taxes and licensing fee and registration fees whatever by the time when i'm done with the car normally my typical hold is about three maybe six months rarely i hold my cars over six months but when i do i still by the time i sell it recoup all of the expenses including all of the registration fees title fees licensing fees insurance tires oil changes whatever everything normally is recouped i literally drive these cars for free and like 90 percent of chances 90 percent of situations actually make money on top of it if you have more questions regarding the paperwork let me know in the comment section and if you've been getting value in this video please like this video and subscribe to my channel that would mean the world to me and let's move on to step number six which is enjoy the car now and track the expenses all the expenses i mean literally when i buy these cars since i live in my van now i don't really have a place to take my car to right like my certain house home situation now I go from city to city, whatever. I track my expenses in between the rides. I've been taking my trips to all over the places and every like major city, I usually attend a lot of seminars. So I buy cars and, and then by the time I'm done with seminars and whatever, I sell these cars. So I've been tracking all of my expenses like gas, food, even hotel I stay for the night because I don't have my van on me, uh, groceries, dinners, literally everything you track all of them you enjoy the car to make sure by the time you sell it you know how much profit that you made at least i love tracking those things and now the bonus the magic text that i sent out before even seeing the car because i feel comfortable about the cars because i i had so many of them so i am able to send out the text initially basically offering the price i want to buy the car for assuming that the car not gonna have more issues that i already see in pictures and issues that mention in a description and on top of that i travel a lot just like i mentioned so i don't really have time to go and see these cars in person anymore but if you are at home you can send the variation of this same text take a look at this text nothing crazy nothing fancy very simple honest literally just be honest about this and send out these texts you can send the very similar text situation some kind of variation of the same text you don't have to say you know i'm visiting friends here and there and this is how many days i'm gonna be here like that's that's creates little scarcity in teller's mind from what i understand but you can create something similar saying hey i have this much saved up this is all i can afford to spend on this car i'm not trying to be disrespectful and low bully you intentionally think about it here's my offer thanks in advance and just send out these texts to like 20 cars 25 50 cars and i promise you you will get the deal here's my kpi key performance indicators out of 22 texts that i sent out similar text to this that i just showed you i get a deal this mercedes that i bought that was two cars ago that was about three weeks ago when i bought that mercedes it was listed at 3800 bucks and it was already listed at pretty good price it was clean title very low mileage for the year and then the only thing that it had 
the hood was a different hood, not from, not from this car. Apparently the branch fell off the hood. They had to replace the hood from the junkyard. So that was my negotiation leverage. So I went there on pictures. I couldn't see that the hood was replaced and the description never said that the hood was replaced. So when I went there, obviously I saw it. The hood was bronze color and the car is silver. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? So that gave me the opportunity to bring the $2,800, my initial offer down to $2,200. So I was able to buy this Mercedes for $2,200. And I went to Las Vegas for Ryan Pineda's workshop. And literally within two hours, I sold that car for 36 or 37, something like that. I made over like 1500 bucks on it, just like that, literally two days later. So again, sent out about 20, 25 texts, but the variation of the same text and you will get the deal, I promise you. As you might know, car expenses considered the second biggest expense after housing expense. And recently it surpassed $1,000 a month per American household, which is absolutely crazy. And it doesn't have to be this way. I've been living this car hacking journey for the last seven years since I moved to the US and I've been enjoying it and loving it and owning all these cool cars for free. And you can also do that, exactly what I've been doing for the last seven years. In fact, I love cars so much, I live in one. And if you want to find out how much it costs me to live in my van on a monthly basis, you should watch this video here. I'll see you in the next one.